Mr. President, the Leader of the Opposition. Mr. President, I lead for the Opposition in debate on the Energy Legislation Amendment Retail Electricity and Gas Pricing Bill 2015. The Opposition supports the Bill and will not oppose its passage in this place, but will seek to move amendments to it. I will address the amendments in due course. The overview of the Bill states that the objects of the Bill are as follows. A. To amend the Electricity Supply Act 1995 and the Electricity Supply General Regulation 2014 to update references and remove provisions as a consequence of the deregulation of retail electricity prices. The Opposition supports that object and the provisions that facilitate it. B. To provide for retail gas pricing order provisions to be retained and revived in the Gas Supply Act 1996. The Opposition has no objection to these provisions. C. On a future date to be proclaimed to amend the Gas Supply Act 1996 to remove provisions authorising regulation of retail gas prices. The Opposition supports that in principle, with caveats that will be reflected in our amendments, reflecting also the uh, concerns of the Legislation Review Committee set out in Legislation Digest 856, released at 4.29 this afternoon, and D, to make other consequential amendments. Mr Deputy President, in an effective market, consumers can benefit from increased competition. Having a choice of electricity and gas providers is good for consumers as long as the market is mature. Consumers can seek the best deal or switch to another electricity and gas provider to obtain a better deal. That is why the Labor Party, at the national and state levels, has championed energy reform over the years. I remind the House that Labor established the national electricity market in December 1998. Labor introduced full retail contestability in the New South Wales electricity sector in 2002. Labor supports the provisions in this bill that tidy up the parts of the legislation that relate to electricity regulation. Labor will support, in principle, the deregulation of retail gas prices when there is clear evidence that competition is working to benefit consumers across New South Wales. In a press release last week, the Minister for Industry, Resources and Energy said, and I quote, under the proposed legislation, gas prices will be deregulated from 1 July 2017 on the condition that there is a considerable increase in the level of competitive offers available to customers in regional New South Wales, unquote. In his press release, the Minister cited the New South Wales Energy Prices July 2015 report from the St Vincent de Paul Society as providing unconditional support for the deregulation of the retail energy market. He ought not to have done that because the report contains caveats and reservations expressed by the St Vincent de Paul Society. Um, on the previous Monday, Monday previous to the introduction of the legislation in the City Morning Herald, Brian Robbins wrote an article quoting Gavin Dufty, Policy and Research Manager with the St Vincent de Paul Society. Mr Dufty expressed six serious concerns about the reforms that are needed in the retail energy market nationwide. He called on the Council of Australian Governments, the Federal Minister for Resources, Energy and Northern Australia and the states to do something about that. The Minister for Industry, Resources and Energy in this jurisdiction should be careful when quoting selectively from reports. Uh, the Minister says that de deregulation will occur when there is a considerable increase in the level of competitive offers. He also cited the 2015 competition review by the Australian Energy Market Commission. The Minister says that the review found competition in the retail gas market to be effective, with six brands competing for the state's 1.3 million customers. Again, the Minister has selectively quoted. The AEMC said that competition in the retail gas market was effective, though less intense than in the electricity market, and understandably so. The AEMC report is a snapshot of competition in the national and state marketplaces at a point in time. It does not consider future concerns or factors that may or may not influence the electricity and gas markets. It is a snapshot of the health of marketplace competition at one point in time only, taking into account things such as customer reviews and surveys, the number of entrants and participants in the market, and in the market switching rates, otherwise refers, referred to as churn, customer satisfaction and complaints to the Electricity and Water Ombudsman. I note the complaints to the Energy Ombudsman in the time frame covered by the AEMC's report in relation to gas have in fact increased by 36 per cent, which we should all be concerned about. It is an informative report. It is not definitive. The issue with the eastern gas market is that there is no authority that provides a definitive conclusion as to what might happen even in the short term regarding some of the concerns that were expressed recently by the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. 
the ACCC is currently conducting an inquiry into the East Coast gas market. Looking at the issues paper released by the ACCC on 4 June 2015, and I'll take some time to note some of those concerns for the House, I believe it would be an understatement to say that all members of this and the other place should be quite concerned to ensure that the government gets it right. The issues paper states, and I quote, Eastern Australia is witnessing an unprecedented level of investment in the development of liquefied natural gas. More than $63 billion is being invested in three LNG projects in Queensland, creating thousands of jobs and business opportunities across <coughs> Australia. These projects are contributing to the significant growth of export earnings in the Australian economy." Unquote. We all work on that, but it continues, Mr Deputy President, and I also quote, in 2013-14, Australia exported 23.2 million tonnes of LNG worth $16.3 billion Australian. By 2019-20, the LNG projects across Australia are expected to be exporting 76.6 million tonnes of LNG worth $46.7 billion Australian, with around one third of this volume coming out of Eastern Australia." Unquote. And here is where it gets interesting, Mr Deputy President. I continue with the quote. While providing economic benefits for the Australian economy, the LNG projects are significantly altering the supply and demand dynamics in the domestic gas industry in eastern Australia. Domestic gas users have been exposed for the first time to international gas prices, and there are increased uncertainties about the future availability of gas for domestic use in eastern Australia. Uh, unquote. I repeat. Quote, there are increased uncertainties about the future availability of gas for domestic use in eastern Australia. Unquote. That is not just domestic use related to households, it's for manufacturers, restaurants, businesses, manufacturers large and small. Uh, and the issues paper goes on. Quote, these developments are occurring at a time when many long-term domestic gas supply agreements are expiring, putting many domestic gas users in an unfamiliar position when negotiating a new gas supply arrangement. A number of public inquiries have been undertaken by federal and state governments triggered by LNG developments and the concern of industry participants about the effect of these developments on their businesses. Unquote. So there is considerably, so there is currently great uncertainty, and the nation and most state governments are looking at what is happening. We should therefore be very careful. The issues paper continues, and I quote: Many of these inquiries reported that domestic gas users had experienced difficulties in finding reasonable gas supply offers, and raised concerns about rapidly increasing gas prices and deteriorating non-price terms and conditions. A number of inquiries recommended a review of the state of competition in the domestic gas industry to identify and assess any actual potential presence of market power and any actual potential exercise of market power, particularly resulting from the developments triggered by the LNG projects. On 13 April 2015, the Small Business Minister required the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission to undertake an inquiry into the competitiveness of the wholesale gas, of wholesale gas prices." Unquote. The terms of reference are wide and members can look them up for themselves. The issues paper goes on to say, quote, "...previous inquiries into the supply of wholesale gas in Eastern Australia received conflicting reports from gas suppliers and gas users about prevailing supply and demand conditions." the extent of active gas supply negotiations and the supply outcomes. It was difficult for these inquiries to assess competing claims about the issue due to critical information about gas supply agreements and contractual negotiations being unavailable due to confidentiality restrictions." Uh, unquote. Uh, and I pause there. Of course, this parliament, uh, this house, in fact, has had its own inquiry into the uh, cost and supply uh, of gas, which actually found that it's not so much an issue of physical uh, supply problems that may be emerging, because there is currently, and has been for a number of years and projected to occur for many years, a continuation of a decline in the demand for gas, both at a, a business and a household level. But it certainly did show that because of the potential to liquefy and export gas uh, through Queensland, uh, some producers are uh, facing a choice between being able to sell to a domestic customer for about $4 a gigajoule versus potentially 12 to $14 a gigajoule to an overseas customer um, would only sell to the domestic customers at that higher price. Um, there was also uh, found in that inquiry that this problem may be uh, not as real as anticipated, that it may be uh, an example of the industry uh, softening up consumers for significant increases by the threat of being of the product being sold overseas rather than the actuality. Um, but again, because of the problems around information and the opaqueness of the market, uh, uh, final conclusions were not able to be drawn. Um, I do not believe anyone could reasonably could argue reasonably that you cannot have a mature well, it cannot be argued reasonably that you can have a mature market that is opaque. 
the ACCC intends to use its compulsory information gathering powers in addition to these confidentiality restrictions, which we think is good. Apart from the matters addressed in the issues paper, concerns were also raised by Mr Rod Sims, Chairman of the ACCC, in a speech he made on 17 September 2015. He said, and I quote, Gas seems to be an energy commodity in eastern Australia, particularly amenable to government inquiries. Nearly all state governments or parliaments have reviews underway into some aspect of gas markets or production. A consistent theme of previous inquiries, such as the Department of Industry and Science market study, is that they have not been able to meaningfully assess conflicting claims from gas suppliers and gas users about providing supply and demand conditions. The confidential nature of gas supply negotiations and the terms available in the gas market also meant that it was difficult to determine policy recommendations for government out of these inquiries. Indeed, many aspects of the East Coast gas market are opaque and complicated. The market is dominated by confidential bilateral contractual arrangements which make price discovery almost impossible. Trading markets are immature and illiquid with conflicting views as to their utility. At nearly all points along the value chain, the market is dominated by large players, be they gas producers and processors, pipeline operators or gas aggregators and retailers. These types of characteristics have the potential to set a market up for the inappropriate exercise of market power." Unquote. Mr Deputy President, we all know what happens in that circumstances. Uh, circumstance, consumers get ripped off. Mr Sims continued, and I quote, while we're not quite at the halfway mark in our 12-month inquiry, we're still some way off drawing conclusions. There are some preliminary observations I would like to make today. First, it is apparent that the arrival of the major LNG projects has upended the East Coast gas market, likely permanently. Second, gas user complaints about a dearth of offers for the supply of gas in recent years are largely true." Unquote. Mr Sims said that the Commission is not quite at the halfway mark in its inquiry and that other inquiries are currently being conducted across the nation. Now, this government introduced the bill last week, defying the usual convention that legislation sits on the table in the other place for five days so that all uh, persons interested could review it properly. The government suspended the standing orders to rush the legislation uh, through. Uh, I, be I believe it has done so because it has run out of work in the other place, but the fact that we put that consideration first and not allow full discussion serves only to highlight concerns the opposition has about some aspects of the bill. Returning to the speech of Mr Sims, he, sa he, he said, and I continue to quote, as we all know, QCLNG has commenced production from both its trains and GLNG and APLNG are ramping up their initial trains towards production. Already LNG demands equal the total domestic demand of the East Coast market. By the time all six trains are operating, East Coast gas production will need to have tripled to meet both LNG and domestic demand from industrial, commercial and household customers and the remaining gas power generation. This burst in demand for gas over a very short time frame for the LNG industry is effectively upending the East Coast gas market. To meet these changing market dynamics, transmission pipelines are being interconnected and flows are being made bidirectional. In other words, the transmission network is being prepared to enable some gas to flow north out of southern production areas and into Queensland. There was originally a strong presumption that CSG, with some incremental supply from Cooper Basin, would largely supply LNG demand. Indeed, at one time it was thought that CSG in Queensland, an unconventional gas out of the Cooper Basin, was going to drive an LNG boom with 16 or more trains being mooted by different projects using gas sourced out of these areas. However, despite the expectation of a gas production boom, the East Coast market seems to be perhaps one of the few gas markets in the world which is now living under the shadow of supply uncertainty. I pause there, of course. Um, the inquiry in this state showed that it wasn't so much a physical con uh, supply constraint, it was whether or not there would be availability at prices that people have come to enjoy. Um, I continue to quote, it's often said that linking the East Coast market to international gas markets means domestic prices netted back from international prices. However, with lower oil and LNG prices and a falling Australian dollar, it's becoming increasingly unclear as to what exactly a net back gas price for the domestic market should be. I think that's a probably quite we, accurate. We have evidence that many domestic users went from a market where they received three to five offers of supply in terms they were able to be negotiated to one where they have received zero or one true offer, largely on a take it or leave it inflexible terms basis. Particularly during 2012-2014, it was hard to find signs of an effective domestic gas market." Unquote. Mr Deputy President, this sounds alarm bells. Uh, it continues, quote, "...when you look at some of the gas deals that were struck in this period, it's clear that a number were related, to, were related party transactions, with the LNG project shoring up supply positions or other deals between suppliers. Some have also asserted that once government started to publicly canvass the idea of an ACCC inquiry into the gas market, behaviours also changed." 
the prospect of regulatory scrutiny can affect behaviour. The ACCC is working with the AMC to ensure that the findings of the inquiry informs the work of the Commission. In this market, characterised by uncertainty, the scope, timing and changes in LNG demand will be critical. It will be important to establish with some certainty if production meets project expectations and if the reserve base of these projects is sufficient to cover production over the life of the project." Unquote. And this is critical, Mr Deputy President. Uh, the Government wants to enact legislation that designed to regulate a mature, mature transparent, effective and genuine top-to-bottom market, the bottom line for uh, the effective passage of this bill. But the evidence before the ACCC inquiry and the evidence before uh, the parliamentary inquiry of this House paint a picture that is far from that sort of market at this time. While we all hope that we will get there over time, um, it's certainly not there now. I understand that the Minister wants to send signals to the market with the passage of this bill. So does the opposition. But let us compare for one minute the gas market with the electricity market. At the instigation of Paul Keating, the Labor Party commenced the national electricity market, a mature market that has been functioning for 10 years and which has an effective auction from the generators every 30 minutes. There are more than 20 retailers in the retail market in New South Wales. And I think the AMC said that since deregulation another four have come in. The monopoly aspect of our electricity, that is the network, is regulated by the Australian Energy Regulator. The Australian Energy Market Operator operates a gas short-term trading market for the market in New South Wales, the short-term trading market, STTM. But if one listens to Mr Sims, that is not good enough, and the shortcoming in that is that the NEM is transparent, but the gas market, at least on the eastern seaboard, is not. Um, and of course, before this government moved to deregulate retail electricity prices, the NEM had been operating for two decades. Um, and we certainly don't have anything like the level of transparency or contestability in the gas market at present. And we are probably a long way short. The opposition has some concerns with the legislation before the House. First, the ACCC is only halfway through its inquiry. There is uncertainty around even the short-term effect on the market from liquefied national, national, natural gas plants. And if the short-term effects are uncertain, there can be no comfort whatsoever in this place about the medium or long-term effects of those projects. Until there is some certainty about that, I cannot see how uh, the Minister or the Government or indeed this Parliament can proceed. And I am not confident that by 2017, which is really just around the corner, we will be in a position to proceed. It would be good if we were, and the end if the evidence established that. However, I'm not sure that we'll be in a position to proceed because no, of the no, uncertainty no. around oil prices, yeah. Yeah. and we know that oil and gas prices are almost um, inextricably well, linked. There are still relatively few retailers in New South Wales for gas. There are six in regional areas, places like Shoalhaven and Wagga. There is only one. I acknowledge that the bill addresses that issue, but I also wish to remind the House of the recommendations of the report of the Select Committee of this House on the supply and cost of gas and good fuels in New South Wales, delivered in February this year. Concerning evidence was put before the committee that is entirely relevant to the question at hand, and those recommendations need to be noted. The first recommendation was that the Minister for Resources and Energy, through COAG, uh, the Council of Australian Government's Energy Council, seek to have information detailing the amount of gas available for purchase included on the National Gas Bulletin Board. Uh, good luck with that one, Mr De Deputy President, because Mr Sims is having trouble finding it. Uh, the second recommendation is that the Minister for Resources and Energy, through the Council of Australian Government's Energy Council, seeks to create a gas market equivalent of the national electricity market under take an audit of all regulatory tools available to the New South Wales Government to improve transparency and openness in the gas markets in New South Wales and Australia. And recommendation three was that the New South Wales Government fully implements the Chief Scientist and Engineer's final report of the independent review of coal seam gas activities in New South Wales September 2014 before an expansion of the coal seam gas industry in New South Wales is contemplated. Um, I won't read the fourth recommendation. Um, the government has expressed support in principle for uh, recommendations one and two, and unqualified support for recommendation three. Recommendation four was that the Minister for Resources and Energy, through the Council of Australian Governments Energy Council, pursue the implementation of Australia wide domestic gas reservation policy, while the recommendation of the Chief Science and Engineer's final report on costs and gas are being implemented. The government has rejected. Uh, that recommendation. The Minister says he will monitor developments in the gas market with a view to deregulating it by 2017. I assume he will do that with consumer interests in mind. However, we have deep concerns about this government's genuineness and the bona fides when it comes to doing what it needs to look after consumers in the energy market in this state. The independent Australian Energy Regulator 2014-19 network revenue determination will result in electricity prices falling. The AER set the amount of revenue electricity networks can That's charge their customers regardless of who owns the network. 
The Ministry, Minister for Industry, Resource and Energy says, and I quote, the New South Wales Government shares the objective of the independent AER in ensuring a safe and reliable supply of electricity at the lowest sustainable cost for the state's household and income businesses. The network revenue determination means New South Wales residents will receive the following average annual reductions on their electricity bills in 2015-16. Network distribution area Ausgrid, average saving on a household bill $165. Network distribution area Endeavour Energy average saving on a household bill $106. Network distribution area Central Energy average saving on a household bill $313. New South Wales small business customers also receive an annual reduction on their electricity bill in 2015-16, unquote. The Minister then referred to additional prices. As I, a government press release dated 30 April. Yeah. <coughs> Subsequently, however, the government appealed the decision of the Australian Energy Regulator, which would reduce cost to electricity users from top to bottom in this state. And um, in so doing, they're seeking to claw back or take away or reduce uh, those cost prices that I just read onto uh, Hansard. Um, the government is doing that simply to fatten the network market for sale, which of course the Parliament has enacted the authorising legislation. It has put its own sale price concerns as a vendor Ahead of the network, uh, ahead of the concerns and interests of consumers in this state, which does not bode well for the passage of this bill. In 2014, the government again decided to pursue the sale of Macquarie Generation assets. On pages 14 to 17 of its statement of issues, the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission said, and I quote, AGL is currently the largest electricity generator in Victoria with 29% of capacity, and South Australia with 38% of capacity. Following an acquisition of Macquarie Generation, AGL would also become the largest electricity generator in New South Wales with 28 per cent of capacity. The ACCC is concerned that the aggregation of Macquarie Generation's capacity with AGL's existing generation capacity in the NEM may have the effect of substantially lessening competition in one or more of the following markets. The wholesale supply of electricity in New South Wales taking into account interconnector flows the wholesale supply of electricity in a combined New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia market taking into account interconnected flows and or wholesale supply of electricity in the NEM. An increase in the price of electricity in wholesale markets is ultimately likely to flow through to the sale to the price of electricity paid by retail end users in regulated or deregulated retail markets." Unquote. The ACCC made unequivocal statements about what the sale of Macquarie Generation to AGL would do to the price of electricity in New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia, which the Premier ignored um, because they proceeded anyway, or wished to proceed anyway. The third concern of the opposition relates to the bona fides of the government in having consumers' interests paramount in its mind goes back to the mechanism inherent in the bill that we used to privatise the ports of Pot Botany, Kembla and Newcastle. Um, on a number of occasions, the Premier consistently asserted <coughs> in the other place in the public arena that price control mechanisms were inherent in those bills to limit price rises by the new port operators and owners on tenants on the ports and end users going through the ports. He said it was monitored by the Independent Pricing and Regu Regulatory Tribunal and that the government and IPART together could control the prices that new port owners or lessees could charge. Mr Deputy President, this is manifestly untrue. Uh, the Premier, who was then Treasurer, should acknowledge that he got it wrong and that the mechanisms in the bills did not say what he said it did. In fact, the mechanisms only require the new port owners to lodge a yearly report with the Minister to notify him of any charges that have been implemented, increased or introduced. No price control mechanism is in place. The Government, and in particular the current Premier, are not willing to assert uh, in Parliament or outside that something that is important to consumers is manifestly incorrect, so naturally we are concerned about that. We will seek to interpose a step between the passage of this bill into law, or its provisions being brought into operation, and the power of the Minister to unilaterally initiate the deregulation of the gas industry. Um, if we get this wrong, there will be massive consequences, as gas is one of the most beloved sources of energy in our households. We have gas heaters, gas stoves, gas barbecues. Households love their gas appliances. Mr Deputy President, I myself have gas appliances, um, as do many people. Um, if we get this legislation wrong, households will be forced to compete in an open priced world market, potentially, and the price of their gas, currently sitting at three to five dollars a gigajoule, will increase to twelve to sixteen dollars with a net back price of eight, nine or possibly even ten dollars. 
Um, grandmothers will be completing the steel, mill, steel mills in Seoul for gas prices, which is something we would want to avoid. If that's not bad enough, let us consider the vast majority of restaurants that use gas to cook meals and all the large, small and large manufacturers that use gas in their processes and for whom uh, refitting their operations would be uh, significantly, significantly costly. If the Parliament gets this legislation wrong and prices go through the roof, um, there is no way of putting the genie back into the bottle. The consequences will be significant. Uh, we will move amendments to interpose a step, as I said, between the passage of the bill through Parliament and uh, the government bringing it uh, unilaterally into effect and initiating the deregulation of the gas industry. The Labor Party has had discussions, and we note that the Australian Workers' Union has also had discussions about domestic gas reservation policy or the adoption of a public interest test. And I congratulate the National Secretary Scott McDyne, Assistant Secretary Daniel Walton, and the New South Wales State Office, led by State Secretary Russ Colson, for their efforts uh, in this regard. This is a good example of how the union movement, the labour movement, and individual unions lead national debates about significant policies such as energy as it relates to manufacturing and other important industries in the nation. They, contri they contribute to debates about the economic prosperity of the nation and make positive suggestions. At the most recent federal conference of the Australian Labor Party, a national interest test for liquefied natural gas export projects was adopted as a result of the domestic gas reservation campaign and argument uh, led by the AWU. Uh, we uh, the New South Wales opposition congratulates the union on that campaign. The Labor Party has expressed in, in principle support for the, for the provisions of the bill but as I indicated, we will seek to amend it to reflect the concerns not only that we have, but the Legislation Review Committee has, which is that it prefers um, legislation to come into force and effect on a given day rather than by executive fiat. And those concerns are set out at pages 5 and 6 uh, of Legislation Digest 856, released before 4.30 this afternoon. Uh, the, the amendments we have uh, will take the Minister at his word and provide that deregulation will not be able to occur uh, before 1 July 2017, mm -hmm. and will also require that uh, this, ha this place and the other place um, uh, authorised by resolution that each house is satisfied that the competitive, competitive conditions in the gas market are sufficient for deregulation of retail gas prices to occur. So we don't have a problem with the legislation being enacted, but we won't, don't want to leave it just up to the Minister and the Government to decide when to press the go switch. We think that the, that the Parliament, this House and the other House, and the members in it should be involved uh, in deliberation and evaluation of whether or not uh, the gas market has become sufficiently mature and competitive to authorise the deregulation of retail gas prices. Um, we do not want to sit back and allow cartel-like behaviour that result in consumers being ripped off. I, re I refer to some of the concerns expressed by Michael West, business writer in the Sydney Morning Herald on 13 April and on 12 October. On 12 October he stated, and I quote, when competition czar Rod Sims delivered the keynote address on the gas industry at an energy conference last month, he did everything but deploy <coughs> the C word, cartel that is. It was, quote, opaque and complicated, unquote quote, dominated by confidential bilateral contractual arrangements which make price discovery almost impossible, unquote. Trading markets were immature and illiquid and at nearly all points along the value chain the market is dominated by large players, be they gas producers and processors, pipeline operators or gas aggregators and retailers, unquote. Uh, Michael West says accurately, and I quote him, things don't get that much more cartelish than that. He goes on to say, and I quote, on one count, Sims is wrong. He kept calling it a market. It is not a market. There is no price nor liquidity. Price discovery is almost impossible and the sector is controlled by a handful of large corporations, mostly owned offshore. As is usual with markets, capacity ratchets up with rising demand and rising prices, leaving overcapacity and falling prices. Don't expect too much relief at the domestic consumer level, though, until Sims and his political overlords sort out the cartel." Unquote. On 13 April, while referring to the state's manufacturing sector, Michael West wrote, and I quote, in Australia, the gas cartel is withholding supply to our manufacturers and asking them to pay $7.50 to $10 a gigajoule to secure long-term contracts. Tired of suffering at the mercy of the gas cartel and of its opaque and anecdotal market data, Manufacturing Australia has called for reforms uh, for the East Coast gas market, unquote. 
And I know that Mr Deputy President, uh, so too has the AWU. Um, he continues, and I quote, this is a good thing, but it doesn't go nearly far enough. Reforms should indeed be struck to free up markets, as Manufacturing Australia suggests. This is not a market, however, it is a cartel. Free markets exhibit, exhibit visibility of supply and demand. This is the terrain of competition policy, unquote. Uh, Mr Deputy President, these are strong words from Michael West. We have also heard strong words from Rod Sims and people who made submissions to the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission inquiry and this Parliament's inquiry. If this bill is intended to send a message to the market to lift its game, the government should add to the message that the opposition's words uh, outlined uh, in the other place in the debate and here today uh, and join with us and support the two amendments that we will propose um, because our concern is if the Parliament simply enacts these changes and the industry thinks that deregulation of retail gas prices is a done deal on and from 1 July 2017, they will not do the necessary work for the market to become properly functioning, sufficiently transparent and, above all, sufficiently competitive to ensure price justice for consumers, be they households <coughs> or businesses, large or small. If the market thinks that deregulation of retail gas prices is just a done deal, they will not get ready or fit for purpose. Um, our amendments will in pro provide an interposing step which says we will enact the legislation, but it will not come into force and effect until each House of Parliament is persuaded that the market conditions are sufficient and right to press go. If the government's approach, as outlined by the minister in the other place, and the parliamentary secretary in this place is their genuine intention, uh, they will have no problem with the opposition's amendments and will support it.